All right, we are back in session. The record will reflect the presence of all jurors, all counsel, and Mr. Winslow are present. Uh, Mr. Owens, you can continue your direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Just uh, pick up where we just were, showing you Court Exhibit 17 for identification. Is this a uh, hand sketch diagram that you personally made uh, when you were removing the four cuttings that we've been discussing that ultimately contain that single source sperm fraction attributed to Mr. Winslow? No. Oh, pardon me. This is the underwear. Okay, thank you. We'll get to that in a moment. Then. Okay. okay, you were referring to Court Exhibit 17, correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and that's what you base your answer no upon, is that right? No. Yes. Okay. That right. is a picture, or my drawing, of the underwear. Okay. All right, next question. Thank you. So we, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the other items of evidence that we tested. Uh, we had to focus on the four pants cuttings uh, from the inside the interior liner of the pants, correct? Yes. Now, did you also conduct the same form of differ differential extraction process for other locations within the same pair of pants? Yes. Did you uh, specifically locate in the non-sperm fraction of the four pants cuttings that contain the sperm fraction of Mr. Winslow's DNA? Did you detect the presence of DNA first? Yes. Did you compare that to the DNA reference sample that had been provided by Jane Doe 1? Yes. And what conclusions did you make? Um, that is, was a mixture of DNA from at least three people, so I assumed three people as my number of contributors in that DNA profile. Um, I briefly spoke about the computer program that helps me do my comparisons. Um, that computer program, part of what it does is takes a mixture of DNA and breaks it into the components of the contributors. I tell it there are three people, it takes the profile and breaks it into three approximate percentages for each contributor. <coughs> So the estimated mixture ratio that was assigned for the three contributors is a 79% contributor, a 13% contributor, and an 8% contributor. Um, and then I compare the reference samples from Jane Doe 1 and Kellen Winslow to the mixture. So the statistic is the same statistic I performed earlier, the likelihood ratio comparing the two scenarios. So the comparison is that the mixture of DNA, oops, sorry, wrong one. No, that's right. Yeah, right? 2.2.02.02 .02 .02 NS, correct? That's correct. Okay. That would be the non sperm fraction of the same hand cuttings that we were referring to that contain the sperm fraction attributed to Mr. Winslow. Yes, okay. So the mixture of DNA obtained from item 2.2.02.02 .02 NS is 1.4 times 10 to the 28 times more likely if it originated from Jane Doe 1 and two unknown contributors than if it originated from three unknown contributors. And yeah. then... Now let me ask in terms of uh, what that means, is that very strong support for inclusion of Jane Doe 1's DNA? Yes, it is. And when you're doing this type of uh, differential extraction process, that would be the uh, separate tube, essentially, that we were looking at in the diagram on uh, Courts Exhibit 13, right? Yes. Now, did you also conduct analysis on the on other portions of the pants uh, that resulted in uh, certain conclusions and numerical values associated with the presence of DNA? Yes. Is it fair to say that you conducted extensive DNA analysis in not only this case ending 149, but then also other cases that were investigated and referred to the Sheriff's Crime Lab for analysis? Yes. Um, specifically, um, did you in fact test uh, a SART kit that had been attributed to a person who we're referring to as Jane Doe 2? I did not test it. It was tested by uh, Mike Palermo, who we spoke about earlier. Did you do the technical review of that analysis? Yes, I did. And did you ultimately then do comparisons at a later date and uh, of concluding his conclusions? Yes. So then um, let me just give a timeout for you right now, because we are going to bring you back at a later date to testify to some of the further analyses that you uh, conducted. Um, 
And would that also include forensic processing of vehicles that were associated with the case? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further at this time as it relates to this topic. All right. Uh, Cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Hensley, you talked about the transferring of DNA. You would expect to see a transfer of DNA when people have consensual sex, right? Objection. Argumentative as to the term consensual. Overall, you can answer. Um, I don't really have an expectation, but there is a possibility that DNA could transfer, yes. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Any redirect based on that one question? No. All right. Uh, I imagine this witness is subject to recall. Is that correct? She is. Okay. All right. But she's done for the day? She is. All right. Ms. Hensel, you are done for the day, but you are still yes. subject to recall. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your testimony. I think we'll hear back from you another day. All right. Have a nice day. All right. Thanks. Thank you. I'll give you a moment to pack up all your stuff. Just make sure you don't grab any marked court exhibits. I'll take those. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You can call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The people now call Jane Doe. All right, and uh, we will bring in her into the back door. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Before you sit down, I'll ask you to face the clerk and raise your right hand if you would please. You do solemnly state that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. You may have a seat. And I'd like to ask Deputy DA Owens to confirm. The witness sitting at the witness stand is indeed Jane Doe number one. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Good morning, ma'am. Hi. All right. We are going to be referring to, as you are well aware, as Jane Doe number one. We're doing that to protect your anonymity. I don't want you to refer to yourself by your true name. Okay? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Okay. And we need yeses and noes for purposes of the All record. Right. Okay, because if you say mm-hmm or mm-mm, that doesn't translate on the transcript to a yes or no. All right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you say that, if you do mention that, I will ask for clarification. We just have to make sure that the record is clear. So if somebody needs to read a transcript about this proceeding at a later date, they are able to do so. Okay? Mm-hmm. No? Yes. <laughs> it's got to be yes or no, okay? Yes. Are you a little bit nervous? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Would you like some water or anything? Yes. All right. I think there's there's some water there, and we'll bring you a, a glass of water right now. And if you ever need to take a break during the course of the testimony, uh, you just let us know. All right. So, yes. Mr. Owen, whenever you're ready, you can begin your direct examination. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, and good morning. Good morning. So I have to refer to you as Ms. Doe or Jane Doe, okay? Yes. Now, the court just asked you, are you a little bit nervous being here today? Yes. I want you to know that any of the cameras that are in the courtroom are not allowed to film you. You understand that, right? Yes. I hope that helps with the nerves a little bit, but we need to ask you about some things that came to light last year uh, that you've been talked to extensively uh, about. And I'm going to ask you as best you can to listen to the questions that are being asked and to answer them to the best of your ability, okay? Yes. First, let me ask you, how old are you? 55. Do you live in the North County area of San Diego? Yes. How long have you lived in North County, San Diego? 55 years. Your whole life? <clears throat> yes. 
What do you do for a living? <clears throat> you don't have to tell us where you work, but just generally, what do you do? I work parking. I'm a parking director. Do you live in the Encinitas area? Yes. Specifically in March of 2018, were you living in the Encinitas area? Yes. Now, on March 17, 2018, do you recall a time when you were walking on Santa Fe Drive in the city of Encinitas? Yes. And that's what I'm going to ask you about is for you to tell us, as best you recall, what happened when you were walking on Santa Fe Drive and in the uh, time period after that, okay? Yes. What were you doing when you were walking on Santa Fe Drive? Um, I was walking up the hill, and um, I didn't want to walk all the way to 101 because that's where I was going. So I was walking up the hill, Santa Fe and El Camino. So you go up the hill, and um, I didn't want to walk, so I turned around and I put my thumb out to hitchhike. Can you describe that general area of Santa Fe and El Camino Real? You're referring to it as a hill. Uh, describe it as best you can. <laughs> well, El Camino is on the bottom, and then you're like, if you can't, you come this way, you go up the hill, Santa Fe Drive. It's in Encinitas, and then you go up and over, and there's Lake, there's Crest, and then there's Lake Drive. So, Ms. Doe, is Crest Drive actually at the top of the hill? It's on the crest of the hill? Yes, it is. And then the next street down from Crest Drive, as you're traveling westbound, would be Lake Drive. Is that right. right? As you were walking down Santa Fe and passing Lake Drive, is that about the time when you uh, decided to attempt to catch a ride or hitchhike? <coughs> right. I was, yeah, I turned around and I said, yeah, to myself, I, I didn't want to walk, so I put my thumb out. What were you planning on doing that day as you were walking through Encinitas towards uh, the 101, as you said? Just to go shopping. Approximately what time uh, on March 17th was this? About 3.30 in the afternoon. As you were walking along Santa Fe Drive, do you remember whether there were a lot of cars around? Yes, there was a lot of traffic. Do you recall whether or not people passed you as you began to thumb for a ride? Yes, there was a few cars. What happened uh, as you were asking for a ride from some of the cars that were passing by? Well, this Jeep pulled over. Can and you describe the Jeep? It was just a black Jeep, a really nice, look brand new Jeep. Do you recall whether or not it was the type that had, it was like a convertible Jeep with a cloth, cloth top, or was it a hard top? It was a hard top. Was it larger or smaller? It was larger. Do you recall any other markings on it or anything else specific about it, other than its color? No. What happened as that large black Jeep, as you described, pull over? He pulled over and I asked him if he'd give me a ride to, to Vulcan, to 101. Were you talking to the person through the passenger window? Well, he rolled down to the right, the, the passenger window. And when you were talking to him, were you the first person to talk, or was he? Um, I think I said, will you give me a ride? And he goes, yeah, sure, I'll give you a ride. Now, can you describe the person who was inside the black SUV? He was... Um, he was black. When you say that he was black, did he have lighter skin or dark skin? He had lighter skin. How would you describe like, the skin tone that he had? He was like more fair than black, black, dark. Do you recall whether or not he had hair? And if so, well, He did what, have hair. What type of hair? His hair was like, it was like an, 
either it's been crimped a lot or it was just like an afro type it was like you know the crimping iron what it does to your hair and it was like long and then it was right right here okay when she says right here she's referring to the about the length at the bottom of her ears next question and when you saw this person and pulled over mm -hmm. did you see whether or not anyone else was inside the black SUV no, I didn't see anybody else. After you asked him if he would give you a ride, um, what did he say? He said, sure, I'll give you a ride. So what happened next? So I jumped in the Jeep, and we started off, started going down, so started going. <clears throat> and then, like, we passed the lights on, I don't know, right where the school was. So we're coming down, and then all of a sudden he goes, I'm not going to take you to a Vulcan. I'm going to take you to the store and fuck you. And I went, no. Ms. Doe, so, Ms. Doe let me stop you there. Okay. Is it difficult to talk about this? Yes, a little bit. It's just a reminder. Now, when you first got into the car, Mm -hmm. Do you recall talking with the person? Oh, yes, we were talking. I did start a conversation of Happy uh, St. Patty's Day. It was St. Patrick's Day. Did the man who was driving, did he seem to be friendly with you at that time? Yes, he introduced himself as Dominique. I, and I introduced myself. You recall the name Dominique? That's what he said. And as you were driving, you mentioned that you went past a school. What school is on Santa Fe Drive? Well, the high school, San Diego High School. As you pass San Diego High School, is that when he made the statement that he wasn't going to take you to Vulcan? Yes, right, like right when we were passing it, right before with the 7-Eleven, right when we were passing, going through the light right there, he changed his tune, he just, like I said, he goes, I'm not taking you to Vulcan, or I'm not taking you to 101 or Vulcan, and and I'm gonna take you to the store, and I'm gonna fuck you, and and if you say anything, you know, I will kill you. Jim. And I just froze then, and then we went under the the underpass, <clears throat> and I go, just turn, I go, just pull over. Right That's here, because the hospital's right. right there. I said, just yeah. pull over right here and let me out, you know, and I won't just, say anything. Just a moment, just a moment. Okay. There was an objection. What's the objection? No question pending. It's narrative. Sustained. You can ask another question. Thank you. So after he made the initial statement that he wasn't going to take you to Vulcan or Highway 101, you were describing what else he said to you. Is that right? Yes. Now, did he make the statement that he was going to fuck you? Yes. Did he tell you where he was taking you? Yes, he said, he was, I'm gonna do this in the grocery store parking lot. Was there a point where he said what would happen if you told anyone what he was going to do? He goes, if you don't do this, I'm gonna kill you. Was that while he was still driving westbound on Santa Fe Drive before you got to the freeway at the pass? He said, uh, no, that's, that was like probably, yeah, it was right before, right when we were going under it, he said that. He goes, I'm, at, I'm going to take you to the Vons, and then if you say anything, I'm going to kill you. So we're going under the underpass. So, Ms. Doe, what did you say to him after he had threatened you in that way? I said, just pull over right here because another light comes up, and the hospital's on the le left left hand or right hand side and I go just pull over right next to the hospital and because the next light comes right after that and and I'll get out you know you don't have to go anywhere or, you know I tried to you know you know make it change the subject of what we were what was going on <coughs> how did he respond when you told him he's like no no way I'll kill you when you told him to pull over and let you out at the hospital did he say that he would kill you? Yes, he said that he, he was going to get this done. And he, what did, when you, what and specifically do you recall him saying uh, about getting this done? Do you remember his exact words? 
he just said he's going to fuck me no matter what. And, and that was it. What did you do in response? I just begged him, please just pull over right here, you know, no, you know, just pull over right here. You don't have to drive me anywhere if that's what made you mad, you know. And uh, just pull over right here at the light, you know, because the hospital is right there, you know, and it's like, but he went the other way because the, there's, you either go to the hospital or you go to the Rite Aid, so it's, that's where the bonds is. And you're using your hands to gesture the hospital being to the right and then what you call a right aid being to the left, is that right? Well, when you're going this way, it's to the right and then the store is that way because you're going down the hill. And Which is to the right? You said we The go hospital's to the right and the, um, and the um, right aid's to the left. Okay, thank you. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Did that person then make a left-hand turn into the shopping center? Yes, he did. Where did he go once he drove into the shopping center? He went he went all the way in, and then there's the right aid, and then he took a left, and then <clears throat> there's the bonds, and then there's 24-hour fitness, and he drove around to the back of the, um, the storage right there. When you say it's the back of the stores, um, would that be adjacent to uh, a planted area that leads towards the freeway on-ramp? Is it next to the planted area? With the yeah, the free, well, when you go to the Vons, you go, there's the Rite Aid, and then there's the wall, and then there's the Vons, and then there's the 24-hour fitness. I don't know what's next to it. And then, yeah, there's a, <coughs> there's a fence, and that's where the uh, ice plant is. So I want to ask you about what happened after he drove you now to the rear of the shopping center. Once he, once he pulled over there, first, do you recall whether anybody was around? Yes, we had to stop for a lady that walked out from the store right there, and I was trying to, like, single her, like, hey, you know, I need some help here, this, you know. Do you remember whether or not you actually called out to the woman? I don't. I didn't try. I was just waving my hands. I would. I didn't scream anything. Like help, help, or nothing. What were you thinking at that moment? Why you didn't scream? I don't know. I just. Based on what he had said to you. I wanted somebody to come to save me. That's what I wanted, but it didn't happen. Based on what he had said to you, what did you think was going to happen as he was driving? You? I wasn't sure. I, I, would, I just thought I was going to die, I guess. Now, you remember seeing this woman, once you had driven, or once he had driven you to the area, to the rear side of the shopping center, do you recall whether or not anyone else was around? <clears throat> no, nobody came out. Do you, do you recall whether or not there were any cars that were parked there? There was two. And. Do you recall what type of cars they were or where they were it's parked? It's like a white Nissan, vehicle? and I think there was a black one or a blue, little, they were just little compact cars. Okay, let me just interrupt here. Make sure that Mr. Owens is finished asking the question before you give your answer because the court reporter is taking on everything you say, and if you start answering the question while he's still asking the question, we'll have overlapping statements and the court reporter can't take them down both at the same time. So please be patient, wait for Mr. Owens to finish this question, okay? All right. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Owens, next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, you mentioned that you remember seeing two cars. Did you ever see any people that were walking around those cars or coming and going from that area at all? No people. Where did this man drive you after he pulled into that area near the two cars? It was just a, a little parking lot in the back, the corner of where the uh, 24 hours fitness. So there was one, two, three, three uh, parking spaces and he pulled in right there. And did he actually park the car? He parked it right next to yeah, the other two cars. There was three parkings, there was one car, two cars, and then his truck, his Jeep. 
what happened after you pulled into the parking space back there? Um, I begged him not to do this, to let this happen. I, I go, uh, please just let me go. You know, I'll never say a word. I, you know, I'm sorry that I asked you for a ride. You know, please just, you know, I'm begging you not to, uh, to do that, do this. I, you know, I won't tell anybody, you know, um, just please let me go. What did he say back to you? He goes, no, I'm going to fucking kill you if you say anything. And I'm going to fuck you. And uh, if you ever tell anybody, I will kill you. And, and he just kept on, you know, that was it. Did he ever show you any weapons? No, but he uh, he he uh, padded to his his uh, his because I uh, he padded to his pant leg, his short leg, and there was like it looked like something was in there. Okay, for the record, the witness is patting her the palm of her hand on her left thigh. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you ever specifically see if he had any weapons, though? No. Did you believe that he may have a weapon of some sort? Yes. What type of weapon did you think he had? I thought he had a gun. What did you think was going to happen if you didn't do what he was telling you to do? That I was going to die or be bleeding all over the place right across the street from the hospital. What happened after he continued to threaten you when you were begging for him to let you go? I, I said, if I do this, will you let me go? And I think he said yes. What happened next? Then he goes, let's go out, out, outside, and I will, I will fuck you out there. So we, we got out of the car. So we both got out of the Jeep, and uh, we walked in the back of the Jeep, and we walked towards the fence. That's where the freeway is. When you walked towards the fence, was that what you were describing as being the separator between the parking lot and the ice plant, I think you used? Well, <coughs> uh, <coughs> we walked in the back, we back of the Jeep, and then the ice plant, yeah, the fence is right there, but then he, he, um, he, there was a t utility, uh, fence there so he walked towards the utility fence and there's a bunch of maintenance stuff right there because there's a park across, right across the way <coughs> Ms. Doe, as he was walking over towards the fence area mm -hmm. were you walking with him yes but not right next to him were you following him where he had told you to go yes when you were walking with him why didn't you run away I was scared. I was really scared to death. I don't. I don't know. I. I really don't know why I didn't defend myself. You and sat there and let him do that to me. Was he bigger than you? Yes, very much so. Can you describe his stature, like how tall he was? He's probably about six foot. Did he? Did he appear to be uh, muscular? He was bodybuilding. What do you mean when you say bodybuilding? Because he had a shirt, a, I think he had a tank top on, and he had muscles. When you saw that, did that cause you any concern for your safety? Well, he was bigger than I was. I, yes, of course. When somebody threatens you, you, ha you have to react that it's, it's so not going to. What happened as you walked towards the fence area with them? We walked over to the fence and we both jumped over the fence. How high was the fence? Mm -hmm. It's about, not that high, about as high as that brown thing. Uh, uh, about the brown stripe? Yeah, there? the third one, the third wood. 
dark blue. The third one from the top? Uh-huh. Okay, indicating approximately five, just five and a half, five feet? Five to five and a half feet? Thank you, Your Honor. And how tall are you? Five feet. Were you able to jump over that fence? I crawled, I, yeah, it's a chain link fence, so it was, so we both jumped over the fence. And what happened after you had both jumped over the fence? Um, he took his pants off, and then I started taking off my clothes, and um, he goes, oh, no, let's just go back to the car, you know, let's not do that. I don't know what he saw or if somebody came out or what happened, but he just all of a sudden he goes, put your clothes, he already had his pants off, I didn't have mine off yet, <coughs> and he, uh, he all of a sudden he just said, put your clothes back on and we're going to go back to the car. Ms. Doe, do you recall what he was wearing, what he, articles of clothing he had removed when you say that he had taken his pants off? It was shorts. He had shorts and he had like a shirt, a yellow shirt on. And I don't know if it was a tank top, but he had muscles, that's all. Okay, indicating the right bicep barrier, which we refer to as muscles. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead. And when you are describing the shorts, uh, were they tight or were they uh, made of some other material? I think they were drawstring, like the, the basketball shorts, like type. And you were describing a tank top of some sort. Was it yellow in color? It was yellow. Did, is that what he removed when you were outside in the ice plant? He had this, uh, he had this um, <clears throat> wrestler's, uh, like leotard on. It's a black that they, you know, you, you, it's like a short, shorts, like the, the ones that the wrestlers wear, they're leotards, but it goes all the way up, and, uh, and they have two little strappies. It's like a whole belt bodysuit type thing. You have that on. And you're taking, both oh, your, you're taking both of your hands and you're describing the area along the chest, but then over the shoulders. Right, a leotard, the leotard type thing that, for your whole body, it goes, it's like a, you know, a, Nylons, like type thing that goes, but it goes all the way up and it has two strips. Is it form fitting to the body? Yes. Was he wearing that the wrestler's uniform as you described, or leotard? Was he wearing that underneath the drawstring basketball shorts and the yellow tank top? Yes. Do you recall what color that item of clothing was? The Black. leotard. Was it Black. Black. Now, did he actually remove that leotard when you were outside of the car? If you recall. No, he didn't. So what happened after he changed his mind or made that statement, no, let's go back in the car? So we went, okay, so we're over the fence. We went, walked back to the car. He opened the car door for me, and then I got back in, <coughs> and um, he went to the driver's side, and he got in the car, and then um, I begged him again. I said, please let me go. I, you know, I won't tell anybody, you know. And, um, what you know. He, Once you had gotten back into the car, were you seated in the front passenger seat? Yes, I was. Was he seated in the driver's seat? Yes, he was. What did he say to you once you had gotten back into the car and you began to protest again? Wait, uh, Do you remember him saying anything at that point? I begged him to, uh, for him to let me go again, and then he, he goes, no, I'm gonna, f I'm gonna fucking fuck you, and, and I don't, I don't remember what he said after. What was the next thing he did? He um, he pulled down his leotard. He took off his shirt and he pulled down his leotard, and he pulled out his penis. Do you recall whether or not when he exposed his penis, if he was erect or not? He was erect. What did he say as he uh, removed his leotard and pulled out his penis? Um. He's, 
he said it's like this, but I want to describe his penis, too. It's like this big. It's not like it's this big. It's like this big. I mean, it's like gigantic. I mean, I don't know how he... Oh, my gosh. I just can't even believe it. I mean... So you're describing, you're gesturing with both of your hands separated. It, I've you, never seen a penis that big. Okay, wait till he's finished with the question. Can you make a record for what she was describing? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. You were taking both of your hands and you were holding them in front of your body, and you were with the index fingers. And yeah, the it's thumbs. not. Just, just a minute. Wait till he's finished okay. with. He, we have to describe for the record what you're doing. Go ahead, Mr. Owens. You had taken both your hands and you were extending your index fingers towards each other and your uh, thumbs towards each other in a circular motion, and the fingers were not connecting. Is that correct? Right. And are you describing just the the size of the man's penis at that point? Yes. Was it large? Very large. What did you think in that moment when he had told you to suck on his penis and exposed himself? How am I supposed to put my mouth on that when my mouth's not that, you know, I, I couldn't open that that big. What did you do? So I, so we're both sitting in the, in the thing and in the, in the truck or in the Jeep, and I went over and I started sucking on it, and then like a minute or two went, and then I pulled back. Okay, the witness is indicating that she leaned to her left. All right, next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you recall whether or not he said or did anything as uh, you performed oral sex on him? No, he didn't say, I, I don't remember. No, he didn't say anything. Did he grab you in any way? Not right then, no. Why did you do what he told you to do? Because he threatened to kill me. He was going to kill me. He, 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 when he was out of the car, he, he hit, he touched his hand. I go, what are you going to kill me with or something? And he, he you know, he touched his uh, shorts. Again, the witness is patting her left thigh with her left hand. Your Next question. What happened after you began to perform oral sex but then stopped? Then he goes, I'm going to come over to the, your side. So take down your pants. So. What did you do? <coughs> so he came over to the, my side, to the, to the, um, to where I was sitting. And he took off his, um, or he already had it off, but he jumped over with his, and he jumped over to the um, passenger side, and he sat on top of me, and he stuck his penis in me. Was he facing you? Yes, he was facing me. He was sitting on top of me. When you say that he's sitting on top of you, what part it, of his body was making contact with your body? His penis, he was sitting on top of me, like with his legs. My legs were wide open and he was like right in front here of me in the do, car. Do you recall what clothing you were wearing that day? I had white pants on. What type of pants? They were just white pants. Did you take them off when he told you to? Yes, I took them off. Do you recall whether you were wearing underwear? Yes, I did have underwear. Did you take them off when he told you to? Yes, I did. Do you remember what type of top you were wearing? Um, oh, I had a tank top on. Did you remove that item of clothing or keep it on? It was on. When he got on top of you, did he feel heavy? Yes. Did he hold you down in any way? Well, when he inserted his penis, it hurt so bad. I don't know how I could have even opened up, because... So, Ms. Doe, let me ask you... I... Okay. Let me ask you a question. Did it hurt when he penetrated you vaginally with his penis? Yes, I kept on saying, ow, 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 because I don't know how he fit that thing in there. And can you just describe as best you can what he did while he was uh, having sex with you? <coughs> he uh, <coughs> he was sitting on top of me, and then he like made me look this way. So you're, gesturing, was, you're moving to your left, 
and um, with your face, your, your neck turned, and you took your left hand right. and you so pushed it. Just, 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 so just someone he's describing okay. for you the record. Your left hand and you put it alongside your right cheek. Is that right? Right. Did he push upon you, or did he just push his body against you? He had my, his body against me, but he had his hand like on my back. Now, while well, you're indicating on the right side of your back, is that correct? Where he had his hand? Yeah, he had his hand like, let's see. Yeah, he had one of his hands on my back. That's all I remember. Okay, now you're indicating on the left side. All right, next question. And when you say that he had his hand on, his, on your back, was he basically mounting you in the front passenger seat of the vehicle? He was on top of you. Right, he was on top of me. Was he able to penetrate you vaginally, though? Yes, it felt like a bunch of water or something came out. So, like, he, he went in for, like, a few minutes. I don't even think it was even more than five minutes, not even that. And I just I just felt this heavy gush of water going What did you think it was? Blood. You felt it was that? blood. Did you feel yourself bleeding? Yes. And I have to ask you, but at that point in time, were you menstruating? No, I wasn't. When you felt that pain uh, and being inside of you, did you want to have sex with him? No. When he was inside of you and you felt that pain, did you had you felt that uh, gushing or that liquid before? Meaning, meaning before he had penetrated you? No. What did you do uh, other than, as you said, uh, say, ow? He just finally got, I don't remember saying anything. He just, he just got the sex done and then he just jumped off and he got out of the car and went to the driver's side and uh, got out. Or he told me to get out. Can you describe his demeanor in that moment? He just got mad. He goes, just get the fuck out of my car. And and he just, you know, he was just mean. Can you tell why he was mad at you? Well, he got what he wanted. Why? I don't know. No. Did he... What's the objection? Non-responsive. Overruled. The answer will stand. You can cover it on cross. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. What happened after he got mad at you and told you to get the fuck out of his car? I just jumped out of the car. I just didn't want to think about it, you know. I was bleeding. I felt this heavy gush coming out of me. I, I was just probably glad that he would, you know, it was done. It was over. Did you put your pants back on before getting out of the car? Yes, I did. But I did tell him that I would turn him in afterwards, you know. When I was leaving, I was like, I'm going to tell the police because there's no way that you're going to get away with this one way or another if it's today or tomorrow or next week i am going to tell him i did tell him that did you say that as you were getting out of the car yes do you remember if, if he responded in any way he didn't say a word where did he go after you got out of the car he went i don't know i did he went towards the freeway when he came out of this grocery store he uh <coughs> He just left the same way we got there, the same exact way. I didn't see if he jumped on the freeway. I didn't chase him down. I just watched him leave, and I said pervert really loud when he left. I screamed it. I just and I couldn't believe it. And Did you see anyone else? Around? I had a cell phone, so I, I don't know why I didn't call. So. so let me ask you about that in a moment. But first, did you see anyone else around in that uh, when you first got out of the car? In the parking lot or where? In the parking mm -hmm. lot. Well, there's a grocery store. Of course, there was people coming in and out, but in the back, there was nobody. So then where did you go after he drove off back onto Santa Fe? I just walked myself down to where I wanted to go, to Vulcan. I went to the ba I went to the bathroom, and I went to the store and bought a douche and douched. Did you actually clean yourself? Yes. Do you recall whether you saw blood? Yeah, there was blood all over, yes. When you say all over, you're referring to yourself? Yes. 
do you ever remember seeing any blood inside his car at all? Uh, no, not on the seat or nothing. I don't. I, I think he. I think it got dirty though. I don't. I don't remember. So then, after you went to and cleaned yourself in the restroom, um, what did you do that day? I just walked around 101 and did what I wanted to do that day, and then I went walked home. I went home. I took the bus home. When you say that you had a cell phone, did you call uh, 911 or report what had happened? No, I did not. Why not? I don't know. I just didn't. At some point after this happened, did you decide that you wanted to come forward and speak to law enforcement? Yes. Um, like I said, um, I told him that I was going to turn him in no matter what after it happened. There was no way. So what was it that changed in your mind that caused you to want to come forward? Because people can't take advantage of people like that. Did you, in fact, go to the Sheriff's Department on March 21st, 2018 and talk to a Sheriff's deputy? Yes, I did. How was it that you first contacted the Sheriff's Department? I walked up there because I live right down the street. Did you ever call as you arrived there? Called, like, what, called before? Did no, you? I just walked up there because it's easier to do that. Did you actually call 911 at some point on the day that you reported it? No, I did not. Once you got there, did you speak to a sheriff's deputy? Yes, I did. Now, when you first came forward and talked about what had happened, did you tell that sheriff's deputy that you didn't want this to happen to anyone else? Jackson, yes, I did. Sustained. The answer is stricken. The jury will disregard the answer. Thank Next you. question. What was it that factored into your decision to file a police report? He threatened to kill me. And I think I'm, I really believe that he would have. And he, I really believe that he would have chopped me up right then or whatever he was going to do is in front of the hospital, right where the park was. I just really believed. And I don't like. <clears throat> This to happen to anybody else, I thought that, you know, my report was early enough that, that you guys could have hooked him up before that. Did you know who he was when you reported this to the police? No, he gave me a false name. I would have known who he was. What do you mean by that? I do know my sports. Now, let me ask you in terms of uh, the person who's in court today, do you know who person by the name of Kellen Winslow is? Yes, I do. <laughs> Who do you believe Kellen Winslow is? What, what do you mean, like him, here? Who is Kellen Winslow to you? What is the name? <laughs> Just a name. But yeah, there's a football star. You mentioned that you know your sports. Do you know, a, a, are you aware of a football star, as you said? named Kellen Winslow. Right, that used to play for the Chargers. Is that the person who you know to be a football star? That's all the, yes. Now, at the time that this occurred, did you know who it was that raped you? No. Did you tell the police the name of the person who raped you? The Dominique is the name that he gave me, that he lived in Oceanside. Is that what you recall uh, talking to the police about? That it was a black man with light skin, with the description that you gave, who you thought may live in Oceanside? Yes. Now, had you ever seen that person before, the person who raped you that day? No. Had you ever seen him since? No. Now, how was it that you came to learn that you were going to be called as a witness uh, in a case uh, against a person by the name of Kellen Winslow? How did you first learn that information, if you recall? 
I don't remember. I think you somebody called me or something. Do you recall receiving a subpoena to come to court for a pretrial hearing at some point? Oh, yes, I did. Do you remember uh, seeing on that subpoena that a Jackson meeting? We'll hear the question. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And on that subpoena, did it contain a name, yes or no? Yes, it did. And is that the first time that you saw the name? Yes. What was it about that name that you recognized when you received a subpoena to come to court? Um, the the Winslow. I I um I am a fan of the of sports, so I thought I probably asked somebody. I I you know didn't like off my head that it was this football star. Prior to receiving that subpoena to come to court, did you know? the name of the person who had done what they did to you? No. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Cross-examination. Estelle, you have been interviewed on a number of occasions for this case, correct? Yes. Right. How many times have you talked to law enforcement? Twice, I think. Just two times? I think so. Okay, so just for clear, you've only spoken to a police officer or a detective on two separate occasions. Maybe three. Okay. If you, if you don't recall, you don't recall. I don't, uh, okay, so just say two then. Just two. Okay. And this is the gentleman over here, Mr. Owens. Uh, have you spoken to him about the case? No. Yeah, never spoke to him? About the case? Yeah, by your testimony. Um, lately or? Ever. Ever. Yes. How many times have you spoken to Mr. Owens? Once, I think. Just one time. Okay, and that's about your testimony, right? Right. Is that before the preliminary hearing or after the preliminary hearing? Let me make this easy for you. You came to court, you testified before uh, the lawyers and the judge, right? Remember that? Yes. Okay. And you remember, you pointed out this man. Right. Being the individual who raped you. Remember that? Yes. Okay. This man I'm standing in front of. Yes. For the record, this is Mr. Watkins. The record will still reflect. Okay. And that's still the person who raped you? No, it's the one next to you, yeah. him. In the prelim, you were pretty sure about okay, it, Okay, right? just a moment for the record. The person next to Mr. Watkins is the defendant. Next question. But in the prelim, you were pretty sure it was Mr. Watkins. Remember that? Yes, I did say that. Now, in between the prelim and today, have you had an opportunity to speak to either law enforcement or Mr. Owens in your preparation? for your examination today? Nobody. Okay, were you ever given copies of your statements that you made? No. Okay, before your prelim, you weren't given a copy of your of your police report? No. Sure about that? No. I want to make sure that you understand my question. Prior to your testimony at the preliminary hearing, when you identified Mr. Watkins as the person who raped you, did you were you given anything to read concerning your uh, testimony. Understand my question? Not today. Not today. For the preliminary, preliminary hearing, the first time you testified, were you given a copy? I get, yes, I think I said yes. Okay. So we're clear. So prior to that testimony, you were given a police report, uh, which basically outlined things that you may have said to the police, right? Yes. No. No, you weren't. Let me make this easy. Were you given anything in writing, right? Document of any type relating to this case? Today? At any time since you were assaulted? No, I guess. I'm not guessing. I want to know whether you received any paperwork from either the detectives or the district attorney regarding your testimony. Understand me? Yes. Yes, you understand me, or yes, you received something? Yes, I received, I read something. Okay. You read 
police reports given to you either by, was it Mr. Owens who gave it to you? Um, I don't recall, no. Was it uh, the detective? It wasn't Mr. Ben, it wasn't Detective Ben. I Davis. don't remember. Okay. But somebody from this side, being law enforcement or the district attorney's office, gave you copies <coughs> of statements that you made to police, correct? Yes, but I didn't read them. You sure about that? I don't read very well, so no, I didn't read them. Okay, let me ask you a question again. You understand that you were under oath? Yes. Right? You understand you have you have taken an oath to tell the truth? You understand that? Yes. And that means that, you know, if you're testifying here truthfully, right? Yes. So you're telling this jury that you were given documents, you were given reports by the prosecution, by law enforcement, you had them in your hand, and you didn't read them. That's what you're telling. True or false? True. Let me ask you this, have you ever testified that you did in fact read them? Do you remember that? Yes, I did say yes. Yes is yes. Right. Under oath, at the preliminary hearing, you said that you were given documents, that you in fact read them before you testified. Do you remember that? Yes. And you just told this jury here today that you never read them, in fact that you don't read. Right? Objection mistakes the evidence. <coughs> you can answer. Is that a yes? Yes, I. Yes, I did it. Now, I'm asking you questions. I'm not trying to give you trick questions here. These are just straightforward questions. If I you said yes. I, if you don't understand any of my questions, feel free to ask for me to rephrase them. Okay. okay. So now that we've established that yes, you did receive documents from the prosecution from the police, you read those prior to your preliminary hearing, correct? Yes? Yes. And at that preliminary hearing, you identified Mr. Watkins as your assailant, right? Yes, but he shaved his head. He didn't have his hair then. Oh, Mr. Watkins shaved his head? No, the other one did. Oh, Mr. Mr. The Mr. one Winslow that did had a shaved head. Mr. Winslow did. Okay. And you're certain of that? And I was not... Let me ask you this. Are you certain of that, that he shaved his head? Yes, the, when we when he when I first saw him at the first time, he had a different haircut. He shaved his head. Okay. And let me ask you that the hair that he has now is that you, you described this assailant as having kind of that's hair, exactly hair. except no, it was like it was like more poofy, but yeah. But you have you're putting your hands right here by your ears, though. Is it down below? It was you? short. It was like it was a short like a bob. Like a bob. Okay, were they yeah. loose but hair? when he appeared in court, he had a shaved head. He had no hair. Okay, just a moment. Let me make the record. She said like a bob. Again, she's referring to about the bottom of her earlobes. And I just need to think we need to nail down some dates. The preliminary hearing occurred on July 11, 2018, in front of Judge Elias, just down the hallway. Right. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay, is that when you're saying he had a shaved head? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure we're clear as to the date. All right, go ahead. Next question, Mr. Carlos. So the, the, the point is when you when you misidentified Mr. Watkins, the lawyer, you were mistaken, right? Right. I mean, it's mistaken. You're mistaken about some of the things you may have seen, right? Is that fair for me to say? But not this. Uh, I'm just asking you, what well, identification of the person who assaulted you, you were mistaken about that. Right. Yes, I made a mistake. Yeah, at the same time, at the preliminary hearing, you were sure that that was the person, correct? Yes. I mean, you, you didn't hesitate at all, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. So there are facts that you are clearly, clearly mistaken about. Is that fair for me to say? That day I was. So let's talk about the day for a little bit. Um, you started the day, what do you say, you're 55 years old? Mm-hmm, okay. yes. Okay, and you work, you said you presently work, right? Correct. Today I'm not working, no. You have a job right now? I'm not, right? I don't work. You, you have a job or you don't have a job? <laughs> Today and this week I don't have a job, so I don't work. Okay, uh, 
back on St. Patrick's Day of 2018, were you employed? No. So at that time, you weren't working? Right? No. And you live with your mother, correct? Right. And that's, don't give me an address, but just let me know which street you live in. Objection, that's the street. Sustained. Is it from the location where you were picked up, how far? About a block. A block, okay. Two blocks. Two blocks. So, let's take you back. You get up, so what time is this in the afternoon? About three. What had you been doing earlier in the day? I don't know, I was walking around. It's my day. Well, you, you, did, were you walking around in your neighborhood? Were you walking around? In I was down towns, probably on 101 or, or down at the, you know, down on El Camino. Okay, this is prior to 3.30, right? <laughs> Before? Before, you Before got I got in on Santa Fe and was hitchhiking. Yes. What was I doing before then? Yes. Just walking around. Okay, well, let's... A little shopping, just walking around, getting exercise. I exercise. I walk a lot. Okay, so you would have gotten up in the morning, like, what, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock? I get up at 5 a.m. every morning. Okay, 5 a.m., and then you immediately went out? Usually I do, but not lately. No, I haven't been exercising. I used to go for a six-mile walk for... Well, you got back to your, how far is your house from the places you go shopping at? About a mile. Okay. Yeah, 15 minutes away. All right, so when did you decide that you were going to go shopping? <coughs> I don't know. I just decided. I mean, can you give me a time? You don't know? No, I don't know. Uh, I cruise around all over the place. I walk around just to get exercise, and I, you know, but when I was, it was. <coughs> I mean, you were you were going out to get exercise when you started hitchhiking, right? Yes. <coughs> yes, you were trying to get exercise when you were hitchhiking. No. I just didn't feel like walking anymore, I guess. Right. I don't know. In other words, when you set out to, to do the walking, you weren't going for exercise, right? You are walking for just walking the same, correct? I was just walking up the hill, walking, because it's uphill, so I was walking backwards, and I just stuck up my thumb. Like you're wearing white leather pants, right? They were white, yes. Like with the, those, aren't the shoes, those aren't the type of pants you go exercising in, right? It doesn't matter what uh, you know, what you wear. I'm asking you when you go exercise. I wasn't exercising though. I was out. It was a Saturday night. It was St. Patty's Day, and I went out. Period. Well, it was Saturday afternoon. Or afternoon. Right. And it was St. Patrick's Day. And uh, had you been drinking? No. Were you going to go drink? No. Do you drink? No. Sure about that? Objection. Relevance. Please, uh, the sidebar yarn. All right, uh, we can have a sidebar on the record. Okay, are you all set? You ready? Okay. All right, we are back on the record, now meeting in front of the presence of the jury. Uh, we just have to wait for the court reporter to get hooked up again. Again, I have a live feed of her, uh, her transcript that comes up on my court terminal. In fact, that's I know a lot of you wonder what I do. I think I've told you before, I do keep my trial notes on the computer and I get the transcript up here. So whenever we come back, we have to wait for her to set up. All right, so uh, Mr. Carlos, you can continue your cross-examination. So, Ms. Go, you just told us, and you just told this jury that you, you don't drink, right? No. So, that yes, that you don't drink? I don't drink. All right. And so, isn't it true that just this year, January, of, mm -hmm. January 20th, 2019, you were arrested for public intoxication? Isn't that true? No. 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 You've never been arrested for public intoxication. I had the flu. I told them that I was. I would. I just got the flu, and I was just getting over with cough syrup. Okay, so you were in fact arrested for public intoxication on cough syrup. And that's your. That's what you told the police, right? That you were on cough syrup. Exactly. Okay. 
That's what I was on. But a police officer actually detained you and, and, and cited you for intoxication in public. Yes or no? It's really easy. Yes. So it's your testimony that you, so are you never drank is what you're saying? Objection. Testimony. I've been sober for a minute. Yeah. Hang on. There's an objection. What's the question? The testimony is that you never drank? Never drank alcohol. All right, and what's the objection? Asked and answered in the court's ruling. Uh, I will allow the answers to stay, to stand. And yeah, we have about two minutes before 12. If we could take a break and discuss. Yeah, we can take our break now. We're going to take our afternoon recess at this point. Uh, please remember the admonition. Don't discuss the case with anybody or form or express any opinions. Uh, please avoid watching any news accounts of this uh, case. Leave your notebooks on your chair, and we'll see you right back here at 1.30. 1.30. Have a nice lunch.